Hello there. I've got some spring farmhouse home decor DIYs that I'm looking forward to sharing with you today. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and thank you for joining me. So this first one here, this I'm sneaking in because it's bunny. It was supposed to be, <laughs> it's bunny. It was supposed to be in my last Easter one, but I kind of got sidetracked. So we're going to throw it in this one. It's technically still spring. So anyways, we're going to use uh, some Dollar Tree goodies. So we've got the bunny uh, wooden cutouts from Dollar Tree and then also one of our wooden crates. We're going to prep them, get them all the stickers off. And then I'm going to use wood glue and hot glue and glue them together because we want these. We want this to be permanent. We don't want it to fall apart. So putting a decent amount of wood glue on here, hot glue to in between there. And then I'm putting a clamp on it and I'm going to let it sit for a minute. That's basically overnight. So now that that is solid, uh, we are going to paint it. I'm using home decor, folk art, home decor, white chalk paint, color cottage white. I'm giving the whole entire thing one good coat. Now I didn't do the inside because we're gonna cover it up and put some goodies in it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> now, after that's dry, we are going to put some pretty on it because that's what we do. Well, first actually, sorry, I've already forgotten what I've done. <laughs> we're going to sand off some of these rough edges. Now it gives it a little bit of charm, a little bit of rustic, but I didn't actually distress it. Now we're going to put some pretty on it. I ordered these uh, spring and, spring flowers and butterflies rub on transfer from essential stencil. This is my first time using them and I uh, like them. Sorry, not first time using them. I've used their stencils. I haven't used uh, their rub on transfers. So I got this beautiful spring little thing here. And what we're going to do is I like to take my rub on transfers and I will cut them apart in many pieces. So I wanted this to, you know, I cut out one bundle here, but we're going to make it fit on our bunny the way we want. So I'm cutting things and I'm going to reapply them in different areas. So if you noticed, I cut this piece off of the left side of that pink flower and I'm gonna apply it to the left side of my bunny. So that it's kind of going up the bunny ear, got the, the butterflies in there too. And then after we rub on the transfer, you're gonna basically take the back off of it, place it down. If you're not familiar with rub on transfers, they're pretty much standard across the board, no matter what brand you have. You're gonna place them down and then you're gonna use some sort of hard uh, pressing item, whether it's a bone, you know, a bone folding cutter, tool, squeegee, credit card, fingernail, whatever your heart desires. You're gonna place a lot of pressure on there to basically transfer that item off. And then you're gonna peel the backer, or the, the, the backers off, sorry. You're gonna peel the plastic off the top. And then I like to burnish everything, which is rubbing down to make sure you've got everything sealed down. I cut another piece of the greenery off here and I'm just trying to find this new home. I like it right here. I literally take things and I just kind of reapply them. If you've been here for a while, you have seen that I take rub on transfers and I kind of make them into their own little collage. It's, it's, it's very fun. Now for this one, I wanted to show you, I, I had already cut it out of the actual larger sheet. And I want to show you, this is what it looked like before I cut it out of the sheet. So I've already cut off the green piece here. We're going to put that off to the side because we're going to use it. But now what I want to do is I'm going to apply this on the side of the bunny. So we're actually going to cut this one in half right down the middle of that pink uh, flower there. So what I do is I put it down where I know I need it. I'm going to get a pencil and I'm going to trace out on the back of the white backer to make sure that I've, I've got the right, you know, the right form. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut that out for on the line that I traced. So now I have the shape of where I want it. I'm going to place it down, take the backing off, place it down, do our magic little rub on transfer rub rubs, given some rubbins and some shoulder rubs. And then now I'm taking the piece I cut off and I'm going to take these two items and I'm going to kind of just make them into their own little piece off to the side over here. So I am creating my own collage. This is the best way I can say is like everybody collages when you're a kid in, in elementary school. And it's like, basically you just donate all the family magazines and newspapers and you let kids get busy with literally a pair of safety scissors and glue for like two hours because, you know, kids are kind of needing that, you know, and they're annoying when we're kids. I mean, all of elementary school, that's what you do. It's that or give them a ball and put them in the corner for a minute. <laughs> not saying you guys know how I spent my my elementary school days but anyways <laughs> once we do all that we've got both of our bunnies beautiful so now this is a six inch wide burlap garland or, or ribbon that I get at Michael's I have a billion rolls of it because I used to use it on my Christmas tree and so what I'm doing is I'm just going to put a liner in here because we're going to put styrofoam in there and I don't necessarily want it to be seen from the outside this is a leftover piece of styrofoam this is actually a floral foam it's the softer kind that you get at Dollar Tree 
star foam is star foam to me. I don't discriminate. <laughs> I use it. I am an equal opportunity star foam user. So what I did was just to make it fit, I cut it in half. I got it to where I need it to be. I'm holding it down. I put the glue in the three stripes so that it basically is on those planks in the bottom, if you were able to see that. And then what I'm doing is fraying off the rest of the burlap that's kind of sticking out. So, you know, at the end, this doesn't show very much, but it's a tiny little added effort that should someone's eye be brought down to this level, you'll see that it's just kind of like a frayed edge. Now we're also going to take some bright green Spanish moss. I get this at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to just tuck that in on the top there. And this is what our canister or our little, our little bunny box looks like, our little floral bunny box. I guess that's what I'm making is a, is a bunny box, a floor bunny box. Now put some carrots in there for Easter, but what I want to do is put some bright spring pink flowers. So this is a bundle of eucalyptus or boxwood from Amazon I've linked in my description in my comment below. And then this is just a wonderful little bundle of pink flowers that I got at Walmart last year. So I'm just going to take a couple pieces of each. Now I'm using the whole bundle of pink flowers here, but I'm going to Frankenstein them apart and you'll see how I put them together right here. Now I've got a few of the uh, eucalypt. I want to say eucalyptus. It's either eucalyptus or boxwood. It is linked in my Amazon store, which is in my description and also in my first pinned comment if you want to see exactly which ones. I have a couple different kinds, but I like these ones because they are bright green on the ends. They're very bright and fresh. They make me so happy. I love all that bright greenery for spring. And I'm just kind of tucking everything in. So here's where you get to see the magic come alive, I guess you could say. This is just me putting things in. Now there's only two kinds of you know, picks here. So we got the greenery from Amazon and then we've got the pink, the pink flowers from Walmart. So one of them I did leave taller. And then also what you don't see here is I did take one more piece of, of eucalyptus and I popped that in the top just to bring the top of the arrangement up. But here's the first side of the pretty girl with the extra butterflies on it. And I love the way it turns out with, with the rub on transfers. They add so much to it. They make it sometimes make it look like you've, you've even hand painted them. Now I didn't do any distressing. I didn't do any ribbon, but the opportunity and the, the, the options are endless here. Tell me what you would have done or if you like her just the way she is. Cause it's also interchangeable. I did glue them in, but <laughs> we could change it up. And then here's the opposite side with our butterflies. I got two pictures on two sides. So one without the butterfly and then you could see both sides of the arrangement. Now, this one's got a little bit of a story. Now you see two, two, of, two picture frames here and you're gonna see me create this little small rectangular picture along with the, our square white one, but that one turns into another thing and you'll see what I mean. So I've got two picture frames here from Dollar Tree. I've got some paper straws and also some felt uh, coaster cutouts. Everything here is from Dollar Tree and we're going to basically prep our items. So what I'm going to do is once I get this little uh, piece here, save that cross because that comes in handy for our next DIY. We're going to measure here and I'm going to take our spring little straws here and I'm going to cut them down and I'm going to make them the backing. They are basically going to be a, a, just a cute little springy. I love all the different colors. So we've got really pretty pastel colors. We're cutting them to fit the width of the inside of our pictures. Now, right now I'm using, these are um, animal or pet toenail cutters I got at Dollar Tree. They worked, but they didn't. I was trying to keep it so that the, the end that I was cutting on the straw didn't get you know too crushed like it matters anyways because I end up putting so much glue on there you can't really see it anyways but just letting you know a little bit behind the scenes use some scissors it doesn't matter <laughs> so here after I got them measured properly and I'm, I got enough of them to fill the entire frame I'm going to start putting them in I want to make sure that the plaid of the of the straw kind of shows I didn't want them to be you know too let's see unorganized looking does that make sense Orga unorganized looking i'm literally looking at my hand like how do you want to say this whitney <laughs> i also alternated all the the pick all the colors on this one if it if it's that important if these are the details that you like here you go i did blue purple pink green blue purple pink green on this one and then i think towards the end i may have just taken a couple things because we're going to put a little bit of extra on this and now for this one we do the same thing now again i'm going to give you a little uh, precursor. You've seen the thumbnail, so you know that this picture does not stay this way. This was not making me happy. You know, well, I've said it's poor. It's not, how do you say? It's just not blowing my skirt up, if you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying? So I put those in, but this right here actually is some twine that I pulled off of one of those Dollar Tree buckets, the, the galvanized buckets that has the twine at the top of it. I grabbed this out of my stash and I said, well, let me see if I can actually fix this because there are some rough edges that you can see around the edge. Now this white one, I'm liking it. It's turning out the way I imagined. It's it's looking really neat and tidy, but that the little rectangle brown girl, that's just not my favorite. I don't know what it is. I think it's because I left the frame the same color. It just wasn't, wasn't, wasn't uh, 
getting that spring wishbone, no wishbone, that funny bone. It wasn't, it wasn't hitting me right. So we're still going to continue because I end up finishing this, but we're going to take the coasters and we're going to cut these apart and basically make these our little focal point of our little tabletop to score. Now you can hang this up. You can put this uh, on the back of a tear tray. Sometimes it's just shelf sitter filler. Say that four times. Shelf sitter filler, shelf sitter filler, shelf sitter filler shelf sitter filler okay i got two out before i messed that up <laughs> so try that let me know shelf sitter filler it's just filler it's pretty stuff that you put somewhere so you can look at it it's like what do you do i make pretty things to look at that's what makes me happy <laughs> so i just cut them into pieces and i'm layering them on top of each other i felt like a half one and then one in the corner and my heart was happy for this little white one. Now on the, the left one there, we're not gonna go into detail for it because I'm just gonna show you at the end that it doesn't make it and you'll see exactly what she turns into because she's so gorgeous now. But this is cute, it's bright, it's springy, it's fun. This would be good in a kid's room. You could lean it up against you know the wall and on the counter or, or the dresser, you know, any little girl or, or any kind of just happy little theme, baby showers, anything like that. Again, shelf, sitter, filler. You guys tell me what you think. Now, this one here, is uh basically all recycled not recycled yeah recycled items so this is a picture that i got at big lots so many years ago that i i really honestly couldn't tell you what it is and this is a leftover piece of a cocoa liner from dollar tree now this will be the third time i have used this one i've had it in two other diys that you'll see here on my channel and this is exactly what's left and we're going to turn this into like a little wall pocket picture and i had just enough left and it fit perfectly in this frame that i couldn't have I couldn't, I couldn't have went shopping in my junk stash and found a better fit. Let's put it that way. You ever go shopping in your junk stash? Like, what can I make today? I want to take pieces from all over and never waste them. Now, getting the staples out of this was not easy. My hand was tired. I had to go take a break because the staples, I mean, it's just a different kind of wood. This isn't Dollar Tree frame, so it's a pretty decent uh, thickness of wood there. So what we're going to do is once we get it all apart, you get all our staples out, take the picture hanger off the back. We are going to paint this canvas because we need it to be neutral for what we plan to do with it. So I just put a Sharpie marker around it after I taped it down. This is how I like to paint my canvases. I've done this multiple times on my channel. So if you've seen this, you'll see, you'll know where we're going, but just hang with me until we get to where we're you know doing the flowers. If you haven't been here before, you'll see this is how I like to do things. Now I used black first. It's a black chalk paint from Waverly. This is my folk art home decor, white chalk paint. I did a black coat first because we had black writing we have florals we have some deep colors that i needed to cover and so what i did was i put the black down first i just did one coat let it dry now i'm doing the white chalk paint one coat letting it dry making sure i get a good dry on that and then doing a second coat a lot of this will be covered remember we're putting a pocket on the bottom so use your own judgment as to how much you want. Like it doesn't have to be a perfect color or a perfect coverage. So now while that's off to the side, technically just, you know, un, you know, behind the scenes, it's underneath my little, my little, uh, thing right there. So it's already dry. We're going to take our Waverly antique wax and we're going to stain the entire frame of the canvas that we took apart. Now this thing took some stain. It took the, it took the wax really great. It was very waxy because again, it's a wax because it, I mean, it's, it's, it's state the obvious Tuesday or something, Whitney. It's, it took the wax very well because it was very waxy. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, you know, I sit in this room and I'm doing these voice recordings and I'm like, wow, yeah, that, that's me. It's awkward, awkward joking in silence sometimes. <laughs> Now, after that dries, we got a good coat. I put a good amount on there. I used a paper towel. I smoothed it all over. We got a good coat. We let it dry. Now I'm taking some more of that home decor chalk paint. I haven't opened this little extra container in a while, so I had to stir it. And I'm going to dry brush all over it. This is where my farmhouse heart starts to soar. These last two DIYs are my favorite because they scream farmhouse to me. Now, once the frame is dry, we've got all of our main pieces here. What I need to do is we're going to put our cocoa liner pocket in the frame first before we attach it to our canvas. So what I want to do is make sure right there I have the top where I'm going to put the hanger back in. I need those holes to be at the top. So I'm going to tuck the the uh, the little pocket, the little coconut liner right there where I need it to be. And first I'm going to apply some hot glue down the edges and I'm going to just make sure that with pressure I'm applying it, it, it it's pushing itself up against the frame. So a little bit of glue squishing out, that's fine because I mean, when do we never use too much glue? I mean, I'm raising my hand for guilt right there. I'm nothing if not sometimes overzealous with the glue gun. And now I'm also gonna take my um, 
staple gun. I literally lost it. I'm like, I'm staring at it with my mouth open. What is that? It's my little staple gun. I'm putting some staples in just to reinforce it. Now, again, once we put this together, it's not going anywhere because there's hot glue everywhere, but I just want you to see it's going into the actual wood frame. We had a decent amount of staples and we also have the hot glue. It's just me making sure that things are secure. I really would never, it's, it, it's like a fear of having something fall apart after you make it. It's like your heart sinks. I did apply some more chalk paint to the front of that because it was a little bit too bright for me as far as the brown colored. I needed it to be more farmhouse distressed because again, my farmhouse heart needs to be happy. And now this is what we got. Everything's dry. So we're going to apply it to the canvas behind there. Now I'm still leaving it taped down. This is the best way I think it's easiest for me. So that way we can put hot glue all over. Now don't apply hot glue too much to the top where you're going to put your picture hanger back in because it's difficult to line up the holes. Learn from me. I had to actually kind of cut it off down to get that in. You'll kind of see that I had to stop recording and go get a better screwdriver and yeah, things things kind of escalated, but I'm taking a somewhat uh, sharp uh, <laughs> exacto or, or razor blade to get that off there. And then now I still have to clean up the edges with a little bit here just to get some of that canvas off. So we're using the back of the canvas as the backing. It looks very nice and neat and we're cleaning all up all those edges. And then now we are going to apply more staples. So we've got hot glue and staples, hot glue and staples. Oh, and by the way, guys, don't forget hot glue and staples. <laughs> Now we're going to put the hanger on now because I glued it all the way through, I was trying to find the hole, my fingernail, it wasn't that easy. So I had to get my razor blade back out and kind of pull it back down, but I, I ended up winning in the end and I got the hanger back on. It took a little bit more elbow grease than I had thought, but again, the holes were already there. So I didn't have to really do that much work. I just had to do a little bit of sleuthing to try to find where they were since I glued them down. So now here's our base. That's how we got to that. <laughs> All right, time to take a break. Now, we're gonna instead take some floral foam. This is a Dollar Tree little block of uh, floral foam there. And we're going to cut this into mini pieces just to get it to fit in our pocket. So I'm just kind of measuring here at least the thickness I need the one side to be. And then from here, you'll see me just, I kind of just, I'm making cuts and pieces just to get her into where I need her to be. And then I couldn't remember which side I was actually measuring. It turns into an absolute just craft show at this point. See, I'm just turning them around. I'm like, which side did I pick? I don't, I needed to name them. It's a good thing I'm not babysitting twins, huh? <laughs> uh, anyways, or working in a nursery. Ew. Anyways, we won't talk about that. <laughs> but I, I couldn't remember which side. I just kind of was trying to get them to fit in there. Now again, with that bright green uh, Spanish moss, I love the color of this. This is perfect time of year to use this bright green floral moss or Spanish moss from, from Hobby Lobby. It's a very bright green color. I love her. Now here's all my flowers. These two here are from Hobby Lobby. They're leftovers. Uh, this is also a leftover from a previous video. This is from Michael's. I'm going over, I don't know if this matters to you guys or not because sometimes these are so old it doesn't matter. These lilacs I got at Dollar Tree just this year, maybe a couple weeks ago, along with these pink wildflowers from Dollar Tree also. Every, those, you know, those two Dollar Tree things are new. The rest of the stuff you're looking at has been in my stash for years. I do know Hobby Lobby carries these orange and yellow guys somewhat, uh, seasonally. I've seen them in their stores off and on. So like I bought those bundles so long ago that it's kind of awesome that they're still selling them. So they're still, they still apply. So I'm taking these longer ones and I kind of want to stick them off on either side. This is usually how I'm planning out. This is now turning into our pocket, uh, our pocket arrangement or our wall pocket, a floral wall pocket arrangement. As I, you can hear the question in my voice. So I just kind of cut all the flowers apart and I'm just, I'm feeding them in. Now I didn't glue any of these flowers in because if you want to, you can actually switch them out, save them, and we can do different things for different holidays or seasons. And then what I ended up doing is also getting some more of that Amazon boxwood and just kind of tucking in some of that bright green because it makes me so happy. And it started to just make me happy. This is the part, I love putting floral arrangements together. It just, it makes my heart swell. I don't know. I just, I love the way it is. Now these long ones seemed a little bit long. So I took the long piece, cut it off and I'm actually pushing it and gluing it down into the bud of a flower lower on the same thing, on the same little stem there. So I didn't actually have to waste it. And then the orange ones, I kind of just tucked into the cocoa liner and then I felt it needed a bow. So I've got this gray and white Buffalo check from, uh, I believe I got this from craftoutlet.com. It is a 50 yard roll because right here I felt the need to have 50 yards of gray Buffalo check. And apparently I paid $12 and 50 cents for it. That was probably a couple years ago. 
Who knows if they still have it or I'm sure the price is higher, but you know, that's because that's how things go. So I took a, a strip long enough. I made it an awareness ribbon shape. I'm going to squish it down in the middle and then pinch it with my fingers. I'm taking some Dollar Tree jute twine. I'm going to tie that in the middle and then I'm going to take another piece of jute twine after I get this kind of, you know, zhuzhed and, and squished everywhere and I'm wrapping it a lot. I'm going to say a lot. I don't remember how many times normally I kind of try to keep track, but I stopped at the thickness that made me feel good because this is a bigger ribbon. It's a, a thicker, puffier bow. I wanted the middle to have, you know, I wanted it to be chunky. Wanted to be chunky girl like me. Want her to be pretty. So <laughs> she's so pretty. So then of course I uh, used some, some fire there on the edges. Be careful with fire guys. There's always water in my room off to the side, specifically for when I burn my fingers, but I never use it for, for hot glue burns. I use it for in case I set something on fire because I'm usually trying to keep things from fraying and I use the candle lighter a lot, but I held it down onto the side and I love how it turned out. Now, if we want to take the flowers out, I felt that the gray Buffalo check bow was neutral enough that we could change out the flowers for a season and that bow and that ribbon would look great i love how it turned out and i felt that you guys should see how this is how i like to put these bigger bows i like to do that with the little tails i like to make it like a little loopy thing right there it makes me happy oh she's so cute i want to hug it there's certain things it just i love these bright fresh colors at the springtime I mean, other than putting some white pumpkins in there, because that would honestly be 100% me, I love the colors of spring. I love that you can get away with putting all kinds of everything just together because spring is when everything's blooming, supposedly. And even if it's not blooming in my world, in the craft world, we can throw everything in there because technically it's all artificial. So there's no, it can't fight back. You know what I'm saying? If there's nothing there, it's going to tell me, no, this doesn't go together because, well, hey. In our crafty minds, who knows what happens? Now, here's our little girl that I I just didn't like, so I pulled it apart. So you remember this one from a little bit earlier? Now, I painted the beads white. I literally did that with a paper towel and some extra white paint. It wasn't really a good coat of anything, but I did paint the beads white on that one. So I did rip this apart. It was a little difficult. I used a decent amount of glue. What I'm going to do here is take this random piece of scrapbook paper, it come with a little paper pack a long time ago, and you're going to see me here make a mistake and not be able to cut right because this is my least favorite technique of putting a backer in pictures that don't come apart. So I had to go get another piece, measure it again, because again, this is not my strong suit. I do flowers. I don't do numbers. <laughs> and then I'm trying my best to go a little bit I want to go over instead of under because you can always take off more, but you can't. It's like getting haircuts or adding salt to your food. You can always put on more, but you can't take away. You know what I'm saying? You can always give more, but do y'all know what I'm trying to say? The, 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 the saying I'm saying, you can always add more, but you can't take away. Anyways, that's like way too long. So I have all these extra wood pieces. So after we got the, the scrapbook paper ready off to the side, these wood pieces came from a previous project where they're Amazon paint sticks and I used them to kind of surround the outside to make a container. We're gonna use these leftovers. And then this is a leftover piece of scrapped craft wood that came from one of these guys right here that I got at Dollar Tree. You'll see it'll say craft wood on it. Everything was already the size I'm gonna use it at. The little tiny, uh, paint sticks underneath there. I'm going to cut probably one or two of them and sand them a little bit, but that piece was just left over from a previous DIY. So again, it was in my stash, but if you don't, we'll cut one to fit. We're going to turn her into a little stand up picture frame. So my uh, premise is that I want these to be in here kind of like almost like a plank type effect. So I'm going to cut them to fit and only a, one of them needed to be cut. And then I only kind of sanded a couple of the pieces. So we're going to take our Waverly antique color wax and we're going to wax it all. We're going to turn it all into the same color and make it all pretty and brown and stained and farmhouse, farmhouse goodness, you know, because of flowers and stuff and such. But take your, your antique wax, put it all over everything. I'm using a paper towel. I'm putting a decent coat on it too. I'm not shy anymore with my antique wax because I used to be like, oh, if I use less of it, no, it, less is not a good way to go. It gives you a darker coating. And then even after you wipe it off, that wood grain shows up more. Plus on top of that, when are we ever not going to distress this with white paint? So I did the frame also, as you can see there, and it added the perfect, it, it warmed it up. So I think that's probably why I was not wild about it because that original frame from Dollar Tree was not cute. So here's my little trick for when I want a dry brush or even if you want to paint wooden wooden letters or something that's going to move around so you don't have to hold it. I take a piece of masking tape and I just kind of put the loops down on the edge. So I'm making like one of those like tape loops, but on there on the paper on the on the tabletop. Now they won't move around when I dry brush them. I'm going to take my extra little cup to the side of 
folk art, home decor, white chalk paint, cottage white, and I'm going to white, well, not whitewash. I'm going to white, dis I'm going to distress it, farmhouse distress it all over. We're doing a dry brush technique. I'm trying to be very heavy handed, but also just one swipe at a time. Cause at some point it just becomes frosted. It's like when you go in to get your hair done and you put one of those caps on back in the nineties and you're like, Oh, I want, I want highlights. And it ends up just being frosted. That's what, be careful with dry brushing. I'm talking through all this. Sorry guys. This is my ad tech glue runner. This is the scrapbooking glue I like to use when I put paper on items. It is very permanent. It's very good. I get it at Hobby Lobby. Now, once we apply our scrapbook paper to the back of our picture, we're going to take our little planks that we made here and we're going to apply them top and bottom first. And then what I'm going to do is eyeball this because again, remember I told you my, I do flowers. I don't do numbers. So I'm not trying to make it perfect. We're also going to put all kinds of pretty gobbledygook on top. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> So this is what it looks like. I mean, I'm already in love with it as it is. Like literally just leave it plain and let me look at it. Now here I've got my lavender out. This is a lavender bush that I got at Walmart a year or two back. They have lavender every year, but find some lavender if you want to use lavender. If you have a different floral um, idea or style or theme, go with that. But I'm going to use a couple of these stems. Now I cut three of them off, but I only ended up using two. Three of them was a little bit too much of a bundle. It was too thick, too puffy for the little frame. So you'll see me here. I'm just, I'm gluing the buds back on to make sure they don't come off. And then I'm kind of arranging all the extra little uh, greenery and, and purpley florally things they have there on the stems. And I'm trying to arrange them in a, in a way they'll make them work. Now off to the side, you'll see here in a second, I have this little extra purple guy here. This was part of another DIY I did just recently with some, some purpley good, good stuff. So I'm going to add that last piece in because it was part of my junk bucket. I'm going to glue them together right here in the middle, just so I can get a little bundle going almost kind of like you're making a little bitty mini, bu mini bouquet. And I'm going to take my Dollar Tree jute twine and I'm just going to wrap the the love into it. Not the life out of it, the love into it. You see how I changed that guys? We're going to wrap the like the, the love into it. And I'm just going to make another, like um, I've bundled some wildflowers together, tie them in a knot on the back and then cut that off. So what I want to do here is after I get that, I need to measure to make sure that it's going to fit inside our little box the way it needs to. And I'm taking the ends here, if you see, and I'm just kind of melting them so they don't look like they've been cut with wire cutters. So yes, we know that it's an artificial bush, but for some reason, this particular item needed to have this detail for me to feel wonderful. I don't know. So again, probably an unnecessary step, but in any event, you can see exactly what I did. Now I put a nice long uh, stripe of glue around the back of it, held it down. And next I felt we just need one little bow and I'm making a bow out of the same jute. I'm pretending like, just pretend you're doing a shoelace bow, tie it with, like you're tying your shoes. I cut that out and then I apply that with just a little dab of glue to the top of our little bundle there. So it looks like it's been wrapped up like a little, like a little bouquet. And that's, that's so cute to me. I love the way it looks. And you see just enough of the scrapbook paper, just enough of the little planks, just enough of all of the dry brushing and the distressing. And I almost forgot, don't forget to apply it down to our little stand. Again, the hot glue I use, it's got, you know, this is stuff that's not necessarily wood on wood. Wood glue would not need to be applied here. Again, this is going to give us a great, great hold and look how great it is. I love this way more than the original. My, when I was finished with this, I couldn't have been more happy. I was literally smiling from ear to ear. You would have thought that, you know, I won something at a lot, like a lottery or something because I love the way it turned out. I was very happy. I took it apart. I was a little nervous as to what you guys might think because I ripped apart something I had already made, but I wanted to show you that not everything stays the way it is and not everything is 100% like making you happy. So tell me, have you guys ever done that? Have you ever had something you come across where you've literally ripped it apart as you're making it? I made this and then five seconds, like literally five minutes later, I, I took it apart and this is what came from it. So that's all of our DIYs today. Um, I did what, maybe five this time. So a couple people were asking for a little bit more in one video. Now the video is going to be a little bit longer, maybe 30 minutes, but tell me what you guys think. I love all these colors. I love all these projects. They turned out so well. I love that bow. I love wrapping that twine around the bow. The Buffalo check just makes me so happy. Plaids, ginghams, Buffalo check. I mean, is that a, is that a farmhouse thing or is that just a me thing? because I literally will put them on everything. I put them on pumpkins, put them on Christmas presents. I put them here, bunnies, Easter, 4th of July. You can, you can apply it to every season and it just makes me so happy. It's just, I guess that's just my style. I don't know. What do you guys think? I couldn't be happier with how they turned out. It's so pretty. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, 
I have a coffee page. I want to thank everybody who has donated for me in the past and who will donate in the future. If you like my videos or you feel you've learned anything today, consider buying me a coffee on my coffee page. The link is in my description below and it helps to go towards maintaining my channel. I love you no matter what. So again, it's not required, but always appreciated. So with that said, I do love all of you more than I could possibly say in words. And that's not just me saying it. I really do. You guys don't understand just how much you help me as much as you say I help you. So many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.